Hello Indie Game fans! What a year, what a year for Indie Games! 2019 has been fantastic yet again, but this year I have decided to cover 25 games since this would allow me to showcase some smaller titles. So we start off with Wargroove, the title that I was most excited about at the end of last year since this is a pixel art turn-based tactics game made by Chucklefish that looked to bring back advanced wars and they did it they really did it. <laughs> That's enough. This should be advantageous. <laughs> An amazingly fun and challenging game, this keeps players completely engrossed in commanding armies to battle foes, capturing buildings, and pumping out even more troops, with the rock, paper, scissors equivalent of the effectiveness of the various troop types. Brace yourself! Commander powers add a new element to the mix, and it is a content-rich package with an epic campaign, puzzle mode, multiplayer, and even an editor that allows you to create your own maps, campaigns, and cutscenes. Again, the good name of the developer has been punished by allegations of labor exploitation, so a little bit iffy there. The heavy metal action platformer Velfaris is tough as nails, featuring absolutely gorgeous pixel art and all action all the time. Playing as a son, returning home to seek revenge on his father, the variety of the environments and enemies is a highlight, which, curiously enough, lends itself to quite a large range of colors used. You have a melee weapon, a pistol and a heavy weapon, ranging from flamethrowers, shotguns, rocket launchers and more, all of which do capture the feel of weapons in old school first person shooters. Recently released is a free update featuring Full Metal Mode, a new game plus mode which increases the challenge even further feels awesome and I particularly love the hit banging when you get a new weapon, so check out my review for more thoughts on an awesome experience this year. Bug Fables, unsurprisingly, features on this list yet again since this is a Paper Mario style RPG with an amazing art style. It is bright, colourful and wonderful as you play as a trio of bugs on an adventure to seek out the everlasting sapling. As is the case with the Mario RPG series of games, combat is turn-based but with active elements, as you have to press buttons in sequence or at the right time in order to cause the most damage, with a perfect block on defense even rewarding you with zero damage taken. The bug-filled kingdom of Bulgaria is a delight, from the Ant and Bee kingdoms to that of the Golden Hills each area feels unique and awesomely done as well. The writing is a highlight and can be quite funny, so for an indie team to be able to capture what made those games feel great, this gets on the board. Outer Wilds is an interesting one and secretly the highlight of many people's year in gaming since this is a time loop mystery in which you only have 22 minutes to explore the solar system before the sun explodes. However, when you die from this or any of the other dangers and hazards, you wake up right where you started with everyone and everything seemingly reset. But of course, you retain your knowledge of what you did. Some interviews and profiles have been done recently regarding this developer, with a highlight being the Majora's Mask inspiration, which I know is quite a divisive game, but this has led to the development of a very interesting game nonetheless.
I've said it before and I'll say it again, but the Texas's The Story of Ray Bibia is one of the reasons why I love indie games so much. It meshes together two genres which are perhaps the polar opposites of each other, making you type out Latin phrases while having to move and avoid projectiles at the same time. And yes, it is as crazy as it sounds. As a result, your brain actually has to work to manage the two systems, typing on the keyboard while moving with the arrow keys. This typing mechanic is also heavily integrated into how the game controls since you have to type to access things like your computer to do a search and to unlock the next level, so very cleverly designed as well. The pixel art is fantastic, the designs and the attack patterns of the bosses well done, and the overall narrative of a private exorcist having to take on these demons is pretty cool. The Rogue Light deck builder Nowhere Profit finally released on Steam after a period of first access on itch.io and can reductively be described as FTL meets Slay the Spire. Adventure across the wasteland as you lead your people on a pilgrimage where combat takes place on a grid where you take turns to position your units and for them to execute their attacks in a turn-based fashion, almost like Magic the Gathering. However, the unique hook is that every individual member of your party matters and fills up your caravan or your deck of cards with damage taken carrying over from battle to battle. So these are not simply disposable units, tremendous art style and great systems in this. My time at Porsche met all of my expectations of a farming sim RPG and offers such a wholesome, feel-good gaming experience. What could be more relaxing than foraging for materials, gathering crops, raising livestock and crafting items to fulfil commissions? What I love the most about this game is the sense of adventure that it possesses. As you are more or less let loose on an island with a home to build up, people to interact with, fantastic locales to explore and even some dungeon crawling combat with dangerous enemies and bosses. It does remind me of some early MMOs, but of course it's a single player experience, so hop in and spend some time in Porsche. The second title from Platonic Games, the developers have perhaps found their stride with Ukulele and the Impossible Lab. As the first game was a spiritual successor to Banjo-Kazooie, this game is to Donkey Kong Country, where again, you play as the chameleon and bat parry. On top of the 2.5D platforming, this has a level select overworld which is filled with secrets, and toggling switches and levers in the overworld can cause the platforming levels to change as well, such as flooding an area, resulting in more water sections in the level. We also have tonics, which unlocks fun stuff like big hit mode, all without the pesky trappings of modern games like microtransactions, so for a modernized throwback experience, can't really go wrong with this title. Hypnospace Outlaw is basically 90s internet simulator 
where you play as an enforcer of Hypnospace, basically a moderator looking for and taking down offensive content while navigating malware and hidden pages. There are programs that you can install, backgrounds and screen savers to choose from, as well as a meta-narrative to through emails. Recent patches have added more content and modding support, so for perfectly encapsulating that 90s Jewel City's internet feel, this gets on the board as well. A stylish pixel art action platformer with an interesting narrative structure, Katana Zero is one of the indie games that have done tremendously well in 2019, garnering over 14,000 reviews on Steam, and has you playing as an assassin haunted by repressed memories which he tries to get out through therapy. Of course, the pixel art is excellent, and the core action is so slick and so stylish, with the main mechanic being that of bullet time, slowing things down and allowing you to execute stylish moves such as hitting enemy bullets back at them. Of course, the comparison will be made to Hotline Miami, with the one-hit kill on both your character and on enemies, with a beautiful soundtrack as well. Steam World Quest Hand of Gilgamesh is a charming and well-designed game that mixes turn-based RPG elements with card combat. The combat mechanics might feel complex at first, but once you get the hang of the basics, you'll easily be able to form powerful combinations using the unique cards for your heroes. Guiding your quirky band of misfit robots and battling through each chapter really gives you a sense of achievement and encourages you to constantly be inventive with your deck builds. This is also from developer Image and Form behind games such as Steamroll Dig and Steamroll Heist. So the constant changes in genres really does keep me looking forward to the next title since the quality has consistently been great. A late entry in the year is Super Epic The Entertainment War, which is a metroidvania where you take on literal capitalist pigs. This is a satirical game which pokes fun at the modern video game industry with its emphasis on making you want to consume, spend and repeat. The Raccoon and Llama duo controls surprisingly well in a 2D platformer with your usual metroidvania upgrades and unlocks for both traversal and equipment, and this even has optional integration with parody games such as the Flappy Bird clone and a clicker game which are done very cleverly. Perhaps a shame that it released in December, so the chances of it showing up elsewhere is pretty slim, but this is certainly one title which I enjoyed. Blazing Chrome, put bluntly, is Contra Hardcore Reborn, sporting a decidedly early 90s look. This comes to us from developer Joy Masher, who has a love like me for Genesis era games. A run and gun platformer supporting up to two player co op, this has fun weapons, challenging bosses, a ton of enemies thrown at you, vehicles, and even changes in the camera angle. The pixel art is on point, and you can eventually unlock new characters as well, 
So for that old school action feel along the lines of Metal Slug or Gunstar Heroes, can't go wrong with Blazing Crow. Jump Grid is a Twitch action game that really reminds me of Super Hexagon and requires you to touch all 9 points on the grid before proceeding into the portal to the next level, all while avoiding the variety of rotating parts on screen. From afar, this game is simply mesmerizing due to the sheer beauty of the geometric shapes, but in the moment, while playing, this requires you to get into a trance-like state blocking out everything else which, to me, is indicative of a high quality one of these since you really need to get in the zone, criminally underrated, so get it if you love such games. Toho Luna Knight is another title which I've been banging on again and again this year and is a pixel art metroidvania which draws from the Toho franchise even to the extent of incorporating bullet hell elements as you regain a resource when you just barely avoid enemy attacks. There is a time freezing mechanic, much like Dio from Jojo, since you can stop time and unleash a flurry of knives, but this mechanic is also used in the platforming sections. I've seen some complaints that this is fairly linear for Metroidvania, with no sequence breaks per se, but an enjoyable one of these nonetheless. Just a quick note, if you are new here and enjoyed the video so far, be sure to subscribe and check out the Discord channel while you are at it. Here's to more indie gaming coverage, so back to the video. We move into the top 10 with the gory and brutal Blasphemous, where you play as the penitent one the sole survivor of the massacre of the silent sorrow as you seek to free the world from a curse known as the miracle. This is an action platformer which is metroidvania like in that while there is a contiguous map and RPG elements, there are no traversal ability unlocks per se that are critical to exploration. Rather, this takes inspiration from Souls-like games in the parrying and the punishing combat but thankfully without a stamina system. This is deeply rooted in Catholic beliefs of guilt and penance, and it is no surprise as well since it is from a Spanish developer who, perhaps in a weird twist of fate, were previously best known for the horror point-and-click adventure game series The Last Door. Everything in this world, from the environment and the enemies, a grotesque and misshapen, with my favourite high bit pixel art which is so detailed and so well done. Perhaps enjoyed is not the right word for this game due to the brutality of it all, but it plays great, the world is dark and macabre, and the look compelling enough to keep me hooked. One of the games that absolutely consumed my life this year was Forager, an action-adventure title with idle game elements, base building and dungeon crawling. There isn't much of a narrative, just gather resources, unlock new islands, help NPCs and find out how this system fits together. I was recently listening to a podcast that kind of put things into perspective in a Skinner Box-like design of games, but this loop is something which I enjoyed tremendously since the automation of the resource production and gathering vectoral style was just something that I wanted to see how far I could push. Fair warning though, if you find that your gaming taste is similar to mine, 
this game will take over your life for however long it takes for you to complete it. The spiritual successor to the Mobile Nora series of Metroidvania games is Noria, where we have nuns instead of priestesses and a wonderful 2.5D art style as compared to pixel art. Super sleek and stylish, with fantastic feeling combat in particular, so thumbs up for me, but this is a simpler, smaller title for sure. The Rope Light Dungeon Crawler, designed by Terry Kavanaugh of Super Hexagon fame, Dicey Dungeons has you playing as a variety of adventurers, turn into dice, thrust into a deadly game show in hopes of winning the prize of their dreams. Again, I have to shout out the Splunky Show-like podcast who did an episode with the man himself and is well worth a listen. But the rogue light mechanics are solid. The sheer variety where each class feels completely different is very satisfying and awesome music and art as well. They Are Billions is perhaps the latest evolution of the RTS genre, shifting away from the competitive multiplayer focus and to the epic single-player survival slant instead. In the core survival mode, you have to build and expand your base while gathering resources, building up the tech tree in order to unlock more powerful units and defenses in order to survive against the zombie horde. As in the title, the swarms of zombies are mighty impressive, which I suppose is something that you can do with modern tech and this kept me coming back again and again to try my luck and my strategy against the AI. They did add a campaign mode which is a good introduction to the game, but the sandbox survival mode is where it's at. Disco Elysium is a no-brainer since this has been lauded as one of the best RPGs to come along since Planescape Torment, which is very high praise since that was one of the most highly regarded games in gaming history. Unforgettable characters. Play them against each other. An RPG where you play as a detective Having to solve a murder case, this shies away from the traditional high fantasy setting with combat as a focus, but instead focuses on the role playing aspect, very similar to tabletop games where you have to find your way in the middle of a dispute between the labor union and the capitalist owners. Mistakes to be made. Consequences to be dealt with. This has a very interesting thought cabinet system where you can equip and mull over thoughts like fascism, choosing to entirely discard them or to eventually be able to internalize a thought into your psyche as well, which then has repercussions in dialogue choices and how you interact with others. 
mix and match from wild skills. Unsurprisingly, this won big at the Game Awards 2019, taking home the best indie game of the year, so a huge congratulations to the team for putting out such an awesome, well-made game. The role-playing adventure of a lifetime. Disco Elysium. The pixel art roguelite dungeon crawler Children of Morta combines the one more run gameplay loop of something like Rogue Legacy with the action RPG feel of something like Diablo into a wholly excellent package that will keep you engaged for hours to come. Playing as members of the Bergson family sworn to protect Mount Morta, a looming sinister corruption begins to stir so fight together against the encroaching darkness. First things first, the gameplay loop is Rook Legacy levels of compelling, giving you resources to upgrade your characters in each run. The 6 playable characters specialize in different areas and are your archetypes of warrior, rogue, archer, mage and so on, with each leveling up individually, unlocking powerful skills in the process. Dungeons are procedurally generated, but there is no permadeath per se since family members are protected by a magical crystal that brings them home when struck down. In a departure from genre norms, this manages to tell a story through the various runs which is a welcome addition. Superb pixel art and great feeling combat puts this high on my list. At number 3, we have THE roguelite deck builder, Slay the Spire. Climb the ever-changing tower to seek out the evil at the source of it all, but to be honest, there isn't really much of a narrative setup. This has 3 characters, each playing very differently, with the 4th currently in beta testing, so there's quite a number of unique card combinations and strategies. Add to this a wide array of game-changing relics, that synthesize with certain cards and strategies and the possibilities are truly limitless. The innovation which seems so obvious in hindsight is that the enemy's intent is shown above the heads prior to their turn as compared to the zero feedback that you get in other RPG games so you are able to plan accordingly to block damage, weaken enemies and so on. My wife plays this game almost exclusively and she derives so much joy from pitting her strategy against the enemies and bosses that she has come to know quite well over the 200 plus hours spent with the game, so take it as an endorsement from her. Baba is You is a Sokoban style block pushing puzzle game where the rules of the game are laid bare on screen and can be manipulated in order for you to complete the level. This is such an innovative title that completely broke my brain in the best of ways and when you finally find that solution, you just feel so pleased with yourself. Mark Brown from Game Maker's Toolkit has an excellent video on the title which I shall link below so highly recommended that you give that a watch, but one of the cleverest puzzle games that I have ever come across. And the indie game of the year goes to... Bloodstained Ritual of the Night the self-styled Igarvania is the spiritual successor to the Castlevania series helmed by Koji Igarashi which absolutely nails the genre to a T. This has a stereotypical story in every sense of its inspiration, with you having to stop the big bad from destroying the country by exploring and fighting your way through a medieval castle. 
Everything from the RPG elements, the variety of weapons, the familiar companions, the traversal ability unlocks, the safe rooms and so on all feel so familiar, really showcasing its position within the hierarchy of Metroidvania games. It is perhaps not your typical example of an indie game, since it did go through many hands, has a major publisher in 505 games, and was kickstarted to the tune of $5.5 million and so on, I did deliberate long and hard on its position in my list, but as a fan of the genre, I cannot say no. The final product is perhaps better than it has any right to be, since the early preview coverage didn't seem great, and while I'm still not totally sold on the art style, to see this turn out well in the face of other crowdfunding disasters certainly warms my heart. Gameplay is king, and Bloodstain does do it very well, capping off an excellent year in indie games, taking the number one spot. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Check out the recommended playlist or the best pick for you, and I will see you after the jump.